How many of you live in the Matrix? As in the movie from 1999 starring a young Keanu Reeves where Neo is really the one. Let's just see how far this rabbit hole goes, Alice. Matrix. Can you think of a number? Are you thinking of a number? The number is all of you. Every last person alive in the 21st century lives in the Matrix. Now, we don't need the big, thick, heavy cables and the glowing green goo to float in to be interconnected to the supercomputers today. But rest assured, people are just as connected to uh, a massive supercomputer database as they were in the Matrix, the movie. Now, as for me, I'm the one that sees the numbers in the Matrix. I'm a data analyst. My name is Jack Talbert, and I am a Bachelorette of Applied Science candidate in the computer sciences program at Renson Technical College. When a receipt prints out and I'm handed the receipt, I don't see a piece of paper with numbers on it. I see a transaction from a transactional table in a database. Databases are what they call tables, when tables are just objects that are facts about a person, place, or thing. And they're used to convey information about a person, place, or thing to a different person, place, or thing. That's the way information is stored. Not in the traditional big heavy cable floating in goo sense from the matrix, but still connected just the same. We do things mainly wirelessly now. I work on uh, databases to ensure data integrity as a data analyst. The reason being there's a virtual you, there's a cyber you that exists in cyberspace. Once you're born, an object is created in the Social Security Death and Birth Index. That's the cyber you. That is just a number, but that number is then assigned to a place of birth. It's assigned to an area code. It's assigned to a zip code, an address, and pretty soon the cyber you takes shape. Your birth date's recorded, and those facts become the cyber you. Now, if you have ever been shopping on a website, you go to a different computer somewhere else, but it's you shopping at that same website from anywhere else, it'll say, did you enjoy your purchase of the shoes? Would you like some carrots to go with that? People who usually buy shoes buy carrots. And it knows you, the cyber you. When that information varies greatly, the cyber you doesn't look like you, there's a problem. That's non-normalized data. My job is to make sure that when you cross paths with your cyber you, that the cyber you looks like you. And when that happens, you pass by and nod to each other and there's no incident. Every now and then, the cyber you will do something like buy a $250,000 Tesla Roadster. Now, the real you doesn't get to enjoy the benefit of the Roadster, but the cyber you has been out shopping for $250,000 cars. This is not accurate data. It's denormalized data. It doesn't reflect you. My job as a data analyst is to go find that information, fix it. That's what data analysts do. I am also a father of three. Two of them are in college in Manhattan, Kansas, and uh, one of them is at home with me. And a grandfather. I have a beautiful grandson back in Kansas. I'm married. Got lucky. Married the woman of my dreams, and I've been a Renton resident for several years now. And as I said, I am a candidate in the Bachelor of Applied Science program at Renton Technical College. I also am beginning my new job on a cooperative educational study with the Garden City Group on Monday to work for them as a data analyst one. So in conclusion, I would like to extend a thank you to you as the audience to listening to me as the speaker, convey information to communicate to you, and I hope that I've done a good job communicating facts about myself to you, because there will be a test, just not on me. So, thank you for listening, I hope you enjoyed my speech, and I hope it was informative, but more directly uh, a good introductory speech.